Life can be so unpredictable and so unsure that you don't know what can happen the next minute, the next hour, the next month, the next year. And sometimes what we want is not really what God wants for us. So welcome to the third part of this vlog. I'm very grateful for every single one of you that have continued to watch my video. So we are at Doha and our bags were checked and we had to check for the location of our next flight. You can check that on this board. So this is the restroom and these people were so thoughtful to put this hanger or something that you can like hang your bag or your clothes so they don't get missing they're very very thoughtful and i just had to show this because it was really nice so i had to go to the next location the boarding gate to wait for my flight i had to wait for like two hours and our passports were being checked and since it's a continued flight i didn't have to pay like extra i already paid everything prior we first had to enter a bus that took us to where the airplane is and i think everyone in the bus going to china benji we are mostly chinese and maybe little foreigners but i think there were less black there except this guy i met from i can't remember where he's from <laughs> We finally got to enter the plane and this one was not like the one from Lagos that I didn't even know we entered the plane. So I was able to see the plane I was entering into. Right, yeah, so this is the interior of the plane. It looked okay, but I think I preferred the one from Lagos actually. So as usual, we had our screen and then we had our overhead where you can like keep your bags. So the first thing they gave us was nuts. This had like different nuts inside, grand nuts, I think Barbara nuts, I don't even know seriously. Then they gave us this food, they gave us um, rice and chicken stew, they gave us cake, they gave us fruits, bread and the other thing, I don't really know what that is. I don't know if it's salad or I don't know. So the rice, I was able to eat the rice because of the chicken, seriously. And the rice was soft, softer than the usual rice I know. So this is the bread they give us and I would rate the rice a... Mm, let me say six over ten i was very very tired this way that's why my face is like this so i finally ate the rice and the chicken and then i went ahead to take the fruits then i went over to the cake the cake was so soft and i could not eat it alone so i had to use the bread as my savior the bread was tasteless so it went well with the cake that was a chocolate cake so i had to like combine both of them something happened we had a seat mate a chinese man he was supposed to sit at our middle but then i guess because there were two girls um sitting close to him and he was in the middle or maybe because we we're africans he left the seat but anyways we were happy he left the seat so my seat mate saloma was kind enough to record me so they gave us the second food which is i think chinese fried rice and then this yogurt the rice I, I did not eat the rice i did not understand then fruits and then bread as well and then this mango yogurt the yogurt was fine so finally we arrived at our location we arrived benju china and this is saloma say hi to saloma so we got to link up saloma is from tanzania so this is me arriving in china for the first time <laughs> so after we left the airport we had to go to the china immigration inspection to get our passports checked and to indicate that there is no fraudulent activity with your passport so we had to fill this form and then we had to go look at our bags like you just see your bag rolling <laughs> I wasn't able to see my bag here so I had to ask like one of the security guys and he showed me where my bag is. He first asked me where I, the flight I entered, I told him and then he just pointed where my bag is so I got to pick my bag. So this is me living with my bag, so tired. So another thing to note is when you arrive in China, you have to get a SIM card because the one you previously used in your country might not work in China. So I had to go get a SIM card. I got a tourism SIM card that would last for like seven days. Then also I visited this mall which is at the airport. Like they have different beautiful places in the airports. 
so i got this um biscuit for like 81 or so <laughs> The biscuit was fine, just that it was a bit soft, but it was okay and I was not so hungry because I already ate at the airplane and I was a bit tired. Okay, so I met this guy from the airplane. He was also going to China. I think he's from Tanzania as well, where Saloma was from. So that was how we were able to connect. And Saloma was going to another school, but him, he was going to, I think, the same similar place where I was going to so we kind of like linked up and he could speak chinese a little because he had been in china for a while and i couldn't speak any chinese so we had to like link up and um do a few things so i had to like chill for a while and then we had to like locate where we could like get the restroom we had to figure out how we, we could um go to our next destination and he was of great help to me like i didn't know what i would have done <laughs> like he was of great help so we're headed for the fourth floor and this is how the fourth floor looks like it looked so beautiful see that thing moving it's sweeping the whole place <laughs> so this place is so beautiful and it's a place where you could like rest your head in case you're tired and one thing about this airport is that it's always busy so you don't even know when it's night you don't even know when it's morning because the airport is always busy so i got to have like two hours of rest One good thing about China is that there is always a solution to your problem. So I think here is a place where you could charge your phone for free. Like, yeah, these people are so thoughtful. Like, it's just so good. Like, because they know that when you're traveling, your battery might get down. And it was really helpful. So it was really helpful for me. I could charge my phone here. So I had to shoot at the airport for the night here. Um, so the next day to find my way. Um, this is, I think this is 13th and I'm so glad I got this toothbrush and toothpaste because I was able to brush my teeth the next morning before um, we left to find our school location. After that, we had to locate our different schools. Like this was the next morning and the transport system in China is just so different. Like I've never seen. So we had to like take different subways to get to the train station because at the airport, there is no train station. So this is me and this Tanzania guy inside the subway and he was to leave me here. This was a very very stressful part of this journey but god helped me and i was able to locate benji south where i was going to take a train going to where i was going to so even at the train station there's a place where you could charge your phone so this is me at the train station i was so tired so tired like I'm even grateful I recorded this part of this vlog because I was really, really tired to do so. And one thing with their train is if you miss like maybe three minutes or two minutes, the train leaves you like nobody is waiting for you and you have to get off when it's time for you to get off. And I'm very, very grateful. Like I could have missed my station. Like, like I could have missed this place. But God has a way of doing things because I slept off and I woke up like three minutes to the time and this is the train it's such a big train very very big so i was able to ask one of the securities there i showed them the place i was going to and they were like oh go down take your right you will see taxi because after the train i was to enter taxi going to my school if i tell you these people don't understand english they don't really understand english <laughs> Finally, say hello to Sanjo, Sanjo City. <laughs> so these are the taxi, these taxi men. Oh my goodness, they understand nothing in English. When I went there, I asked them, I showed them the place I was going to. They didn't even understand. It was one man that came and explained to them the school, and they could understand 
but I think the man telling them and finally one of them um carried me. I think I paid sixteen point five yuan or so. I think it's a fifteen minutes drive, not so far from the train station. <music> One thing I've realized these few days of being in China is that although they make things easy for you, you have to pay for it. Um, are they coming now? The people coming? Yes, uh, just a wait a second. Oh, okay. Some students will get here. Because my phone was off, I wasn't able to call the teacher, so I asked someone around. And then finally, I was directed to the International Student Hostel. So thank you very much for watching this part of this vlog. Feel free to like, share and subscribe.